What's up, everyone? This is Eric, KJ4YZI with Ham Radio Concepts. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. Like and share on Facebook, follow along, and stay up to date on videos like this and when they're posted. So today we're going to talk about the Zygu X5105. The 5105 from Zygu is their newest and latest creation. A China radio company that's making HF radios now, and they're trying to enter the market with something good. And I have to say, I've made a video on the X108G, and that was a neat device, but this one right here really impresses me. Um, you know, this, this company, Zygu, they're, they've done something that a lot of other companies haven't done. There were people with pre-production models. They trialed these with several hams uh, that you may have seen on YouTube a while ago and asked for feedback. They, they built on the ideas and the feedback that the hams gave them. And that made a lot to the creation of this device to make sure it was in their best, best form post-production when they sell it. So I don't think they did that with the X108G unless I'm wrong, but this one here, they actually worked on some of the bugs. And there are future firmware updates that can be added to this. Uh, and some other, uh, th some other features that go with this, they have an antenna tuner they, with a, a built-in am amplifier with a built-in antenna tuner. They have uh, a pan adapter waterfall that'll connect to the IF stage here. All, you know, they're, they're really trying and I give them credit on something like this. And what I'm going to do is go through this radio and show you all about it. I won't do an unboxing video, but they did give, they put the, uh, they, they do honor a warranty. They put one year uh, warranty period as long as you buy it from a authorized dealer that sells Zygu products. So that way they can track with the serial number that's on the warranty card uh, for failure. So they, they are standing behind it. The, the gentleman I talked to, his name is Steven with Zygu. And he's, He's really, uh, really knowledgeable and really good at uh, promoting this. So, one thing I want to mention is the manual. First off, the manual is very well written. Um, over the years, we've seen a lot of videos on Bofeng radios and Ushan radios. You've seen a lot from me, but in the comparison, this, there is no comparison. This this manual really is written written well. I mean, you don't have to translate with poor English. It'll tell you, um, you know, with this key and with the main tuning knob, the power of the transmitter can be adjusted. The range of adjustment is from 0 0.5 watts to 5 watts with a 0 0.5 watt step. So, I mean, it, the, the manual is good. And another thing about the manual is it does tell you, uh, it gives you the specs in here, but it tells you the pinouts of the microphone in case you want to use your own microphone, you want to wire up your own. It does give you the pinout of the 8-pin accessory DIN, mini DIN, as well as for a key for CW. So um, we'll talk about that accessory pin and stuff later. So the manual, very well written. Uh, it does, now the thing is, the other Zygu came with the same, not the other Zygu, the, um, the RS918 clone that I did came with the same power cord. Now this is what they include. It's got the DC barrel on the end of it. But the, the wire part on the end is kind of like a do-it-yourself, be creative. Uh, not really a problem, but uh, you, you'll have to put some sort of leads or something on here. Um, this does have a built-in battery, and uh, I'll tell you more about that in a minute. But one thing to note right off the bat, if you use this for power, for external power, the unit will bypass with the circuitry inside and use it only for external power. However, they state, do not, under any circumstance, when you're transmitting on external power, pull this out and go to battery. So what you want to make sure is that your power supply or your source that you have this plugged into is, is reliable because if it shuts off and you're in the middle of transmitting, it's when it tries to go back over to the internal battery as it's transmitting, it's going to damage the circuits. So keep that in mind. So the power cord. Um, <clears throat> the microphone has the same identical microphone as the X108G. If I can get it out of the box here. So here's the microphone for the uh, X5105 and over here I have the microphone to the X108G. All right, so it's the same microphone. So nothing to have to uh, learn new again on the microphone, but, but the microphone has a lot of remote functions, changing bands and, and accessing the tuner and stuff. So it, it looks uh, identical to an ICOM microphone that I've used before, but it's uh, for their radio. 
So about the unit itself, you see that it has a, it's, it's like an LCD, we can call that an LCD dot matrix display. It's got, uh, you know, you can adjust the contrast of it. Um, the, the case design, and I don't think I have any tape measure near me. Yeah, I do. I've got one right here. My antenna tape that's starting to get rusty. Video on that, antenna tape by Radio Waves. So the case design, about 7 inches, about 4 inches, and about 2 inches. So this reminds me of the size of a brick, you know, a red brick. It's got some weight to it. And the reason it's got some weight to it is the, the case design, which acts as a heat sink, the built-in 3,800 milliamp battery lithium ion battery and the auto tuner that's built in along with all the circuitry. It does have some weight to it, but not a problem. Um, a lot of features to go ahead uh, to go through on this. So keep watching. Uh, you know, it's it, the thing. The one thing I want to notice right away is this battery indicator. I've had this radio for about a week now and I haven't made too many contacts on it, but I've called CQ quite a bit and I've had this thing running to play with it. This is still on 100% battery. Today, I used it for an NFED antenna for MFJ uh, pre, uh, uh, video out in the field, QRP, and I finally saw it go to 99% as I was transmitting. So the battery in this is impeccable compared to my 817 battery. My 817 battery, and it's not the battery, um, it's because the 817 battery is a smaller size, but the 817 battery only gets me about two to three hours. I've had this on for a while in standby and used it for transmission, and the battery is still 100%. Now, how accurate that battery, It maybe it drops to zero suddenly. I don't know, but we'll keep that updated. Um, still at 100%, so what a, what a feature to have such a high-capacity battery in this radio. Another cool thing that I'll note right off the bat is the built-in feet on this thing. So everybody knows I'm a Yesu fan, and I love my 817, but I gotta buy a 40 or $50 thing to go on the 817 to get it feet. This thing has feet on it. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, in the field, it's got the feet on there, or I can stand it up like this, right? Um, so a lighted keypad. Now, from my understanding, the pre-production models, maybe they weren't lighted, but they're lighted buttons here. The screen size, well, the screen size is half the radio. I mean, it's about three inches wide by two and a half inches tall. Uh, easy to read display in daytime, in nighttime. Uh, you know, everything you can see on here, it's not too jumbled. It isn't color, but it's not hard to see. It's got your main, you know, frequency display on there, the mode, uh, you know, your, your S meter, which can also be for power output or uh, SWR your volume and some menu features will go in here also. So the, the screen, you can see it right there. It's, it's a pleasure to look at compared to my 817, which is very small. Now, again, I'm not comparing this directly to the 817, but I have to have something to go by in video. The uh, 817 screen is quite small. You know, I love my 817, but this is a much better pleasure to look at. Um, front firing speaker here. And, um, <laughs> The funny, okay, here's another cool feature. So we'll go on the side first and look, okay? On the this side, we have a BNC connector. And there's enough room on this nut here that you can back off that nut and put a counterpoise wire if you use something like an MFJ hamstick that I've showed you with a right angle adapter. Uh, you can put a wire behind that nut and hang it for a counterpoise wire. This is your IF stage here. That's going to be where the pan adapter or waterfall display would plug into. Your uh, speaker output, your power input. Now on the other side, you have an 8-pin accessory uh, mini DIN. Now, that 8-pin accessory can be used uh, with the for several things. Uh, I'm waiting on a response to find out if they have a pre-made cable or I'm going to buy a cable on eBay and make it myself. But I can connect a ham radio deluxe with this as well as uh, for PSK for digital modes, audio in, uh, audio out would be the speaker out over here. So you can also probably use this for the uh, optional power amplifier and uh, tuner that is made for this because it's got band uh, data that comes out of here too. So as you switch bands, it'll switch the bands in their uh, Zygu amplifier slash antenna tuner automatically. 
key for your Morse code or CW. Uh, ATU would also probably be for the antenna, uh, antenna tuner. CIV, I'm not sure what the CIV, I haven't had a clarification. I'm guessing that might be for firmware updates, from my understanding, because there's no USB on here for firmware updates uh, in your 8-pin mic. You have buttons on the top here for uh, uh, volume up, volume down, band up, band down, and a PTT button. What's the PTT button for on top? <laughs> That's because there's a built-in mic in the front, too, so you can use this thing really as a walkie-talkie if you wanted to. Um, you can hold that. You could put a BNC on the top there and hold that button with a counterpoise wire, of course. Hold that button and talk into it like it's an HT or a field radio. Or let's say you're having a QSO party and there's a couple people sitting around you. They could use this button. Now, I did make a test on 80 meters um, with a, a fellow uh, ham, uh, uh, KI4LUY, Patrick and uh, Sebastian here. And uh, we tried it both ways, with the mic and with the internal mic. And he said that it sounds sort of similar, but you get a little more of the room sound with the front mic uh, as opposed to the uh, probably less noise canceling. You hear everything out of that inside the case, you know, and everything. So keep that in mind. But if you're in the field and, uh, you know, you can get away with that, that'd be really cool to be able to use the PTT button uh, and talk right into the front of the radio if you had a couple people, or if you're rag chewing and your wife's over your shoulder, she can push the button, or you can push the button and and uh, yell into it. Um, so built-in preamplifier and attenuator here. Your modes are uh, sideband, CW, um, FM, and AM. Now, AM is only 1.5 watt carrier, and uh, the rest of the modes are five watts, five watt max QRP. Um, VFOA, VFOB, you have your receive incremental tuning for CW, your noise blanker here, as well as other menu features here. Um, split operation, uh, noise reduction, okay, noise reduction level. By hitting menu, you'll see it goes to several other, uh, you know, AGC and filter. Now, the filter, I'll show you that in a second. You can change the filters to whatever width you want um, for different modes. It's pretty incredible. Uh, also, we have, you know, memories, VFO mode, you know, tag the memory if you want to. Um, from my understanding in the manual, this says for recording 1, 2, and 3 for recording CW messages, maybe for calling CD CW. So the RE1, 2, and 3 buttons, you can program three messages up to 99 characters each <coughs> with a CW message for it to play back on the air. You hold the button to go into the editor. You can go through and scroll and add all the characters you want to make a message. CQ, CQ, this is KJ4YZI, Echo Lima 97. If you're on six meters and it's quiet and you're wanting to call, but you're tired of paddling it out, you can uh, put it in here, hit save, and then when you're on the band, and it'll play back whatever you have in there. You could also go into, uh, go to menu and go to key speed. And your key speed is your words per minute. And your key would be for auto auto key for a paddle, left, right, or manual for a straight key. So it does have a key or built in. Uh, squelch, you have compression, your meter, so you can change the meter, like I said, from S meter to SWR to power output. And, um, you know, version and the IFO function for the uh, external waterfall there. Now, as I said, if you hold menu, now you can go into the filter section and you can see that you can change the filter bandwidth of, um, you know, like I have 500 hertz, 2.4, and the third one I didn't mess with yet, uh, RF gain and such. You know, be careful what you mess with in here if you don't know what you're messing with. Um, CW delay sideband, um, backlight, reference clock. Again, there's some things that you wouldn't want to mess with. Um, and if you hit the RST, that's a master reset. So the auto tuner function built in. So a great thing to have an auto tuner built into the radio. So I don't have, that's one less piece of gear I have to lug around. So if I'm using the end fed like I was today and I do need a tuner, I could just hit the button and it'll tune up. I don't have to run it with an outboard tuner. 
Now, the tuner is pretty quick. Uh, it does tune a relatively high SWR. My uh, high gain that you've heard me say in multiple videos, the SWR is still way off on 20. I just haven't had the time to pull the antenna down and change it. But uh, the SWR is like 9 to 1 on 20 meters. And if you hold the button here, you'll see. Not sure if you can hear that. It's not really that loud. Sounds like any other auto tuner. And it tuned about that fast. Hello, KJ4YZI. Testing. So it's less than 3 to 1 now. It's, it's usable now. But if I go to a band that it's already resonant without having to, uh, you know, without a SWR, um, if it's already flat and you hold the antenna button, it doesn't tune because it doesn't need to. So my SWR is KJ4. Oh, wrong mode. Let's see. FM. My SWR is almost 1 to 1 on 30, so it doesn't need to tune. But if I go back up to uh, 20 meters again, it takes about 4 to 5 seconds to tune. That was me. Yankee Zulu India QRP portable in Florida. Kilo Juliet 4 Yankee Zulu India. Over. That is a Roger. 5 watts here in Vero Beach, Florida. You're a good 5759 here. Over. Sure, the name is Eric, Echo Romeo, India Charlie, and we're in Vero Beach, Florida, Echo Lima 9-7, about two miles from the coast and sitting 15 feet from the river. Over. Hey, thank you very much. I will do that. Kilo 9 Alpha from Kilo Juliet 4, Yankee Zulu India. Thanks for the contact and 7 3. All right, 73 Thank you very much for stopping by. Well, there you have it for an in depth look at this radio without getting too over technical. But a lot of people may ask a question now. Now, what do I get? First, I made a video on the X108G, then the RS918, then they changed their mind. Now they're going to see the X5105. Well, one of the next videos coming up is going to be a big shootout. We're going to see, we're going to compare all the features on all four different radios and see which one might best suit you and which one might leave my shack. I have a few radios now and some have to go. So we will figure out which ones have to go, which ones are going to stay on the bench, and uh, give you a look at all four of them side by side. Stay tuned, subscribe for that. Get on Facebook if you are, and you can get the posts on when I get that video done. Until next time, thanks for watching. 7-3, hope to uh, have you follow along in this video adventure for this hobby we call amateur radio. From KJ4YZI, 7-3.